Mr. President, members, uh, 30 years ago when HIV and AIDS uh, first burst onto our consciousness, we couldn't have imagined um, that there would be a time when we could actually consider eliminating all new infections of HIV and AIDS. It was a time when there were really no treatments. Those that were most affected were at the margins of society. That was thanks to stigma, fear, discrimination, and poverty. They were moved even further to the margins and the shadows that resulted from apathy and being ostracized. The vectors of transmission were largely misunderstood. We still have a lot of those challenges that we face today, but a lot, of, a lot has changed. Treatment options have vastly improved. HIV AIDS has now been transformed into a chronic and manageable disease and not a death sentence. Knowledge about prevention through behavioral, medical, and pharmaceutical interventions has advanced tremendously. We know now that people who live stable, safe, and secure lives, who can access quality, comprehensive health care, can live out long and healthy lives. And those individuals who become virally suppressed to near zero viral load don't transmit HIV to other people. The somewhat artificial divide between prevention and services is really recognized to be a thing of the past. An important form of prevention is giving help to those who have gaps in their lives, whether that's housing, whether that's knowledge of their HIV status, social support, access to high quality health care, those sorts of things. So this bill is fairly straightforward. It actually builds on work that is already underway at the Department of Health in cooperation with the Department of Human Services. So it memorializes an effort to create a strategic plan to put Minnesota on the path to dramatically reducing the incidence of HIV and AIDS. It has an aspirational goal of eliminating all new infections. It's modeled on similar efforts that are going on in other jurisdictions, other states, and other cities. And it's modeled, they're all modeled on the National HIV AIDS Strategy. It asks or requires that through testing, care, and services geared towards the elimination of HIV entirely, that it start with some initial outcomes that would include reducing new diagnoses by 75%. Currently, members, we have about 300 new infections per year. That's been going on every year for many years. We haven't bent that new infection rate down appreciably at all for many, many years, well over 10 years. 15 years, actually, members. Increasing those who are knowledgeable about their status to 90%, that would be an improvement by a few percentage points, but we know that uh, a number of people, uh, 12 to 15 percent of those who are infected, just don't, they don't know their status. Increasing those who receive treatment, who come into care and are maintained in care uh, to 90 percent, that would be an increase from present rates of 70 percent, fully 30 percent of those with HIV and AIDS, including many of those who know their status, simply aren't in care getting regular medical treatment. And, of course, corresponding with that, those who, uh, with HIV who become virally suppressed to zero, we would increase that from 90% currently. That's appallingly and abysmally low at 62%. The report would recommend the best alignment and coordination of resources and services, as I spoke of earlier, and also identify emerging best science and practices and how best to deliver those. The report would be, would be due to the legislature in the early part of next year. Members, this is very much worth doing. Presently, about 9,000 people in Minnesota are living with HIV and AIDS. Every new HIV infection costs Minnesota $400,000 in lifetime costs of care, medical costs alone. With 300 new infections per year, that would add up to $120 million in expected state medical costs. So members, you can imagine just reducing the new infection rates by just a few, if we could even cut it in half, it would be a tremendous savings to our state. Uh, but it is absolutely within our grasp to bring new HIV rates down to zero. Thank you, members. I appreciate your support. Thank you, Senator Dibble. More discussion on Senate file, House, I'm sorry, on House file 2047, Senator Klein. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I'm very, very honored to be a co-author on this bill with Senator Dibble, Dr. Jensen, Senator Abler, and Senator Housley, a bipartisan group of people in a time, Mr. President, when science is often under assault and scientific inquiry are 
and medical interventions are called into question. Uh, this is an aspirational and hopeful bill, which, as Senator Dibble describes, seeks as an aspirational goal to eliminate new HIV infections uh, in Minnesota and, and eventually across the United States. I just want to speak uh, briefly about the only infectious disease in world history which we have effectively uh, eliminated. Uh, and many of you know that that is smallpox. Uh, smallpox was originally transmitted to human beings about 50,000 years ago through rodents. In medical science, we call that a zoonosis, an infection that transmits from rodents to uh, humans. Uh, it was present on the mummy of Pharaoh V uh, and uh, killed uh, 400,000 Europeans per year in the late 1700s. In 1967, the year that I was born, uh, there were 15 million people in the world with smallpox and 2 million people that year died of smallpox. So this was a generational plague that existed throughout the centuries uh, and was thought to be a part of human uh, peril and suffering that was ineradicable. But it took people with vision, hope, and faith in the power of science to see that it could be eliminated. It was declared eradicated entirely in 1980 and has now been eliminated from uh, the plague of human existence. Uh, HIV, uh, as Senator Dibble mentioned, was discovered and identified as a disease in 1981. Similarly, it is a zoonosis. It originated in primates. Uh, the first medication that was an antiretroviral was discovered in 1987. Uh, when I started as a young resident at Hennepin County Medical Center in the early 90s, HIV was uh, a true plague. It was at the peak of its uh, existence. Uh, patients, uh, it is hard to fully describe the amount of panic that surrounded patients individually suffering from this illness who felt that they had no pathway out, and staff who cared for them, uh, people who required transfusions, who were concerned about transmission, accidental needle sticks, which would happen in a hospital, the entire level of uh, tension and stress surrounding this illness is impossible to describe. And then, as Senator Dibble mentions, through the power of modern medicine, uh, HIV now uh, is considered a chronic and controllable disease parallel to diabetes mellitus, uh, and uh, the hospitals have returned to a state of calm with regard, at least, to that disease. Members, we can't eradicate virus-borne diseases from our human existence. It takes vision, it takes faith, it takes hope, commitment, and ultimately a trust in the value and power of modern medicine and, and uh, human scientific inquiry. And I'm proud to be a co-sponsor on this issue. Uh, Bill, I encourage your green vote. Thank you, Senator Klein. Further discussion? Seeing none, the Secretary will take, give the bill its third reading. House File Number 2047, a bill for an act relating to health, requiring the Commissioner of Health to develop a comprehensive strategic plan to end HIV AIDS. Secretary will take the roll.
Gracias. Buenas tardes. With all those senators wishing to vote who have voted, the senator will. After. Secretary, close the roll. Okay. The board is still open. Secretary, will close the roll. With there being 63 ayes and zero nays, the bill passes, title agreed to.